Hey there guys, welcome to the uh, R8500 R20 uh, ICOM channel. So uh, this is another operational video to help you use the functions of your ICOM ICR20 portable communications receiver. I've been uh, working a lot so I didn't have time to do uh, as many as I wanted but now we uh, will try to uh, catch up and do uh, the most videos possible to explain how to make your R20 work and um, today we are talking about the scope function the ICOM ICR20 has a function that's um, uh, kinda useful but I'll, there are some quirks on it but it's interesting to have it the um, scope function basically scans a frequency range and gives you little a little graphic presentation of the signals that are on each side of your center frequency now for example here I've tuned the um, medium wave AM broadcast band and put the uh, scanner at 600 kilohertz and I have stations here in Montreal that are in uh, higher in frequency, nothing really below 600. So um, I'll use the uh, skull function and scan part of the band. Now, how does it work? First of all, you got to keep in mind that the scope works by scanning 14 steps. Why 14? I don't know. That's the way they just programmed the scope in the. Uh, scanner so it means that it will jump 14 frequencies 7 on the lower side 7 on the higher side so you have 14 steps these steps are programmable um, you can actually choose the different steps and the level of the steps so that's why the 14 steps means that you can scope as small as 14 kilohertz because if you choose the one kilohertz step well it will scan 14 times one kilohertz means 14 kilohertz and the highest step level you can choose is 100 kilohertz which means that the 14 steps will do 1.4 megahertz or 1400 kilohertz hope you follow me on this I know it's not that easy to understand so just think that the range you will scan is 14 times the step you will choose. Now another little thing to know about the step you're going to choose, you got to be careful not to choose too big steps. Depending on where you're actually using your scope, steps will need to be in a good interesting range that will be usable. If you choose 100 kilohertz steps, for example, in the medium wave band like I am here, well, you'll just jump over a bunch of stations and the scope will never hear them. Because keep in mind that if I'm at 600 kilohertz and I choose 100 kilohertz steps, it means that it will go from the beginning of 100 kilohertz uh, of the receiver and go up the steps up to about 1.2 megahertz so which is in, in 100 kilohertz steps and since the stations are 10 kilohertz apart in North America it means that you're jumping over stations that are in the 100 kilohertz uh, ranges uh, so in for example in this medium wave broadcast band I will choose probably a small step of 10 kilohertz which is the basic setup of the steps in North America in Europe you might want to choose 9 kilohertz it's available and of course in the uh, higher frequencies if you're in the UHF range and that uh, the steps is 12.5 uh, kilohertz then you will want to choose preferably 12.5 kilohertz uh, so that you don't jump over uh, any frequencies. So you got to be uh, careful to choose the good tuning step of the scope. 
Now, how do you choose the tuning step for the scope? Well, you've got the number two button that has a sweep on top. You press and hold, and with the right dial button, you'll actually, the right dial button here on the top, you can see the step, it says here that it's at 12.5 kilohertz. With the right dial button, I can change that 10, 9, depending on the step size that I want to use. So the lowest step size is 1, the highest you can go is 100 kilohertz. I'm in the medium wave band, so I'll choose 10. And here we go. Once it's done, you can let go of the button, and you're actually going to see that it's going to sweep once, and you'll see a little graphic representation at the bottom here with spikes. The spikes show you where stations are located. Now you can rescan that range if you want by pressing the scope button here, right here on the right. So when you press one time scope, it scans the whole range. And um, there's a little dot at the bottom here that's um, right in the middle showing you that's the center frequency and this is the spikes that are higher or lower in frequency from where you are is a little wide dot it's not easy to see but it's right here and I hope you can see it on the camera I think you can because I see it when I look at the screen so it means that what's below the little white dot is lower in frequency so all the spikes are lower and the spikes that are on the right side of the, the, the dot are actually in higher in frequency. So I have two little spikes here on the right side, uh, matching probably some of the medium wave stations that I have on uh, frequency. So uh, I can actually take the tuning button and start tuning higher and higher. And you see the little dot moves on the display. And once you're under a spike, here we go. Get involved. Matthew Darsh. You see there was a station here, right below. If I continue, next spike is here. And so this is a way of actually finding all these signals that you've seen on the display, the graphic display here. So you can also scope, uh, use the scope and let it scan all the time by pressing and holding scope until it beeps, uh, the scope now actually functions all the time. One drawback, you can see that the scope does give you some really quick audio, but you won't hear any stations, you'll just see the spikes. So you can't really listen while you're using the scope because it mutes the audio. But it's an interesting feature to know what types of signals are available all around a center frequency. So I'll change this and stop the scope by pressing scope. Now, I'll put the scanner on the 2 meter handband, uh, 146.700 for example. Now, I want to tune around and see if there's something to listen to. Now, you can choose a small step of uh, 5 kilohertz and it's going to give you what's really close. You can choose a bigger step. Uh, like I said, be, fair, be careful because the bigger the step, the more you have chances of actually missing out on signals. So how do you do that? Again, like I told you, you just press and hold the number 2 button where it says sweep. Right dial button, we'll go and choose here, uh, for example, um, let's do 15 kilohertz, for example, just for fun of it. And you let go. And you can see it did sweep, but there's nothing to listen to. And if I scope, it's pretty quiet. I can press and hold the scope and let it scan and if a signal actually shows up you'll see a spike so you can actually use what I did, the little trick that I did to um, go and see what signal it is. Um, um, let's go for example in the UHF range. Uh, if I go to 
452.000, for example, right in the middle of the um, what is called the um, the commercial band here. So there's a signal on 452. You can see here I'm receiving a digital type of trunk signal. Now I want to see what's around my frequency in the 450 uh, megahertz range well the sweep the uh, actual steps are 12.5 so I'll press and hold sweep and change it to 12.5 so that I match the steps of the channels on this uh, range and I'll actually press and hold the scope and see now you can see that there's a middle spike where the uh, digital signal is present but what's interesting is it's like a little live thing here. So if you just leave it like that, you'll actually see that if other signals become present, they will actually spike on each side of the uh, frequency range. And once again, if you hear a signal that's somewhere else in the frequency range, for example, I'll change, you can uh, actually change the frequency while it's scanning. So you see here some spikes. So if you want to see what these signals are, all you need to do is just press the scope key where it's going to stop and by using the right dial button to change frequency you will actually tune around and you see your little white dot here in the display. So it sees the big spike here is another digital signal. So this could be a very nice feature and knowing what is around to listen to on different uh, frequencies. Now what is missing here on the scope for the ICOM is the permanent scope. It would have been fun to have a live scope meaning that you can actually listen to your center frequency while it's sweeping the other frequencies but unfortunately that was not done on this receiver so it limits a little bit the use of the scope but it's a very nice little feature to have uh, it's still there and so you can just put your radio on a frequency and start uh, tuning uh, actually sweeping around the, the, the frequency range uh, to see if there's any other signals present for example here I'll scope here and so if other signals are present they will actually show up so I hope that wasn't too complicated uh, this is a video for the uh, little scope function on the ICOM ICR20 if you have any comments questions on what you've seen let us know and uh, if you have any questions it's very important uh, there are no stupid questions and uh, it's interesting if you have any questions I'll be happy to try and answer them. So, hope you enjoyed these videos and thanks for watching 73s.